smoke and mirrors. It was the day of the children's midsummer party. Thomas was on his way to Brendam Docks. He was to meet the Fat Controller and the Great Magician. The Great Magician was going to do a magic show at the party. As he pulled into the docks, the Fat Controller was waiting with the Great Magician. At the end of the party, the Great Magician is going to do a big trick, boomed the Fat Controller. I call it the Grand Finale, said the Great Magician, and I need some very special things for it. Thomas thought this was very exciting. You, Thomas, will collect them, added the Fat Controller, and if you do your job well, you can be in the magic show. Thomas was happy. He really wanted to be in the magic show. The Fat Controller told Thomas to listen very carefully. First, you must go to Maithwaite to pick up a blue box. Then you have to go to Marron Station to pick up a red carpet. And lastly, you have to go to Knapford to pick up a yellow sheet. But Thomas wasn't listening. He was dreaming about being in the magic show. Can you remember that, Thomas? asked the Fat Controller. Yes, sir, puffed Thomas, and he chuffed away. When Thomas arrived at Maithwaite, Elizabeth was making a delivery. I'm going to be in a magic show, tooted Thomas. I've come to collect something for the grand finale. How jolly, steamed Elizabeth. On the platform was a brand new bright red phone box. That must be it, whistled Thomas. And it was loaded onto his flatbed. Next stop, Marin Station. Thomas tooted. Thomas puffed in to Marin Station. Bertie the bus was dropping off holidaymakers. Hello, chuffed Thomas. I'm going to be in a magic show. That's nice, said Bertie. What are you doing here? I'm here to pick up something for the grand finale. On the platform was a stack of yellow deck chairs. That must be it, whistled Thomas. The deck chairs were loaded onto his flatbed and off Thomas chuffed. When Thomas arrived at Knapford Station, Henry was there. I'm going to be in a magic show, puffed Thomas proudly. That's exciting, wished Henry. Why have you come to Knapford? Thomas couldn't quite remember. I have to collect something for the grand finale, something blue. Well, puffed Henry. There's a big blue flag over there. That must be it, whistled Thomas. The blue flag was soon loaded onto his flatbed and Thomas puffed off to the party. Thomas was sure the great magician was going to be very pleased with him. Thomas arrived at the party the children were very excited. They couldn't wait for the magic show to start. I've everything you asked for, puffed Thomas proudly. The red phone box, the yellow deck chairs and the big blue flag. The great magician was very cross. You have brought all of the wrong things. I need my red carpet, my blue box and my big yellow sheet said the great magician. Without them, I can't do my grand finale. Thomas felt awful. He had been daydreaming about being in the magic show. He hadn't listened properly to the fat controller. He'd puffed to all the right places, but he'd picked up all the wrong things. I'm sorry, he wished sadly. I've been a very silly engine. The magic show was about to start. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Please help me unload the flatbed, then I will pick up all the right things. In no time at all, Thomas was unloaded. Thomas knew he would miss the magic show, but he knew he had to be back in time for the grand finale. First, Thomas went to Maithwaite Station. Blue box, blue box, he whooshed to himself. And there he saw the big blue box. 
Thomas was pleased. Soon it was loaded and Thomas raced off. Next, Thomas chuffed to Marin Station. Red carpet, red carpet, he puffed to himself. And sure enough, there was a red carpet ready to be loaded. Thomas was very happy. Lastly, Thomas steamed into Knapford. Yellow sheet, yellow sheet, he sang to himself. And there was the big yellow sheet. It was quickly loaded onto Thomas's flatbed and Thomas raced back to the party. Thomas arrived back just in time for the grand finale. Thomas had missed almost all of the magic show, but he was pleased that he had done his job properly. The great magician began the grand finale. Abracadabra! Thomas was amazed. The children clapped and cheered. Shazam! Oh! cried the children. And now for my best magic trick. The children laughed and cheered, and Thomas was the star of the show. Emily's Rubbish Emily is a grand green engine. She's very proud of her big wheels and her perfect polished paper. One morning, Emily was very excited. The Fat Controller had told her to work with a new engine. I hope he's smart and useful, she wished. Emily met Thomas waiting at a signal. The new engine is waiting for you at the shunting yards, tooted Thomas. I can't wait to meet him, puffed Emily, and she chuffed away as fast as her boiler could bubble. Emily steamed into the shunting yards to look for the new engine. He was the scruffiest engine she had ever seen. Hello, Emily, wished the new engine happily. My name's Whiff because I'm a bit smelly. You're going to help me collect rubbish. Emily was horrified. Come on then, she sighed. Let's get started. Gordon was talking to James and Henry in a siding. When they saw Emily with Whiff, they laughed. Hello, whistled Whiff. Who's your messy new friend with the funny whistle, Emily? snorted James. We smelt you coming for miles, wheezed Gordon grandly. My name's Whiff, whistled Whiff. It suits you, laughed Henry. Phew! Emily was very embarrassed. She hurried away. Whiff puffed after her. Up the line, Emily and Whiff passed more engines. When they saw Whiff, they all laughed too. Emily was tired of being teased. I must get away from Whiff, she huffed. Emily pumped her pistons. Wait for me, whistled Whiff. But Emily wasn't going to wait for Whiff. And soon Whiff was a long way behind. Emily was glad Whiff was gone. It's not my fault if he can't keep up, she huffed. Later, Emily had to wait for Elizabeth at a crossing. Where's this new engine? honked Elizabeth grandly. Uh, he got lost, wished Emily. No, I didn't, whistled Whiff cheerfully. Hello. Oh, sniffed Elizabeth. Aren't you going to introduce me to your new friend? But Emily didn't want anything more to do with Whiff. 
She chuffed away as fast as her pistons would pump. Wait for me, whistled Whiff cheerfully. Up ahead, Emily saw a branch line. Maybe if I puff down here, Whiff won't see me. And Whiff didn't see Emily. He puffed past on the main line. Emily chuffed all around the Fat Controller's railway. She tried to hide from Whiff, but still, everywhere Emily went, Whiff always found her. In every tunnel, and in every siding. At last, Emily escaped from Whiff. Thank goodness! She wished. Now no one will laugh at me for working with such a smelly engine. Up ahead, Emily saw Spencer. He was very cross. I meant to be taking the Duke and Duchess of Boxford to an important lunch, huffed Spencer. But my way is blocked by all these smelly rubbish trucks. Flatten my funnel, steamed Emily. They were the rubbish trucks that Emily and Wift should have cleared earlier. Someone will have to move them, sniffed Spencer. Emily knew that was her job. I suppose I'll have to move them. Ugh, she shuddered. Emily buffered up. She pulled as hard as she could, but the trucks were much too heavy for her to move on her own. Just then, Gordon chuffed past. Can you help me move these rubbish trucks? tooted Emily. Me? snorted Gordon. Certainly not. Can you help me move these rubbish trucks, James? peeped Emily. Ugh! No, thank you! wheezed James. Emily was upset. I'm still waiting, huffed Spencer impatiently. If Whiff were here now, he'd be happy to help me. Emily sighed. He wanted to be my friend, but I wasn't kind to him. I must find Whiff and say sorry. Emily looked high and low for Whiff, but he was nowhere to be seen. Then at last she heard Whiff's funny whistle. Hello, Emily, whistled Whiff cheerfully. I wondered where you'd got to. I'm sorry I ran away from you. Puffed Emily. That's all right, whistled Whiff. I'm just glad you found me. Let's go to work. Spencer was getting very impatient. Don't worry, Spencer, tooted Emily. Whiff is here to help now. Freeze my firebox, snorted Spencer when he saw Whiff. That scruffy engine can't move all these rubbish trucks. We're going to move them together, chuffed Emily. Oh, thank you, Emily, whistled Whiff. Spencer watched as Emily and Whiff coupled up to the rubbish trucks and quickly shunted them away. Spencer was very impressed. Whiff! Is a very, very useful engine, he wished. I know, bubbled Emily happily, and he's my new good friend, too. Thomas set sail. It was a blustery, buffety day on the island of Soda. Edward's coal trucks creaked and cranked against the wind. Percy's mail trucks shuttled and shivered, but Thomas hardly noticed the wind at all. He puffed into Brendam docks. The mayor of Sodor had ordered a brand new sailing boat. I am to take the sailing boat to the launch party, tooted Thomas excitedly. The mayor, the fat controller and Lady Hat will all see the boat go into the sea for the very first time. The boat had a tall mast and was painted bright red. It's wonderful, gasped Thomas. It's red! I should be taking it, huffed James. 
It's heavy. I should be taking it. Weesh Gordon. Cranky lowered the sailing boat onto Thomas's flatbed. It's not too heavy for me, tooted Thomas. You must wait for the engineer to lower the mast, snapped Cranky. The masts will be no trouble for me, Thomas whistled, and he raced away. Thomas puffed proudly along. The wind was strong and the boat was heavy, but not too heavy for Thomas. Thomas came to a steep hill. He chuffed hard, pulling the heavy boat. I can do it, I can do it, he puffed. And soon he reached the top. Hoorah! Thomas tooted. I did it! He felt very pleased. And he steamed on. Then Thomas met Emily. Look at my sailing boat, Emily! Thomas tooted. Don't you look grand? wished Emily. And Thomas knew he did. Thomas felt very grand as he steamed past Elizabeth. Be careful with that tall boat, she hooted. It's a very blustery day. But Thomas felt far too important to take any notice. Next, Thomas puffed towards a low bridge. Rosie was waiting at the signal. Watch out, Thomas, whistled Rosie sharply. Thomas applied his brakes and stopped, just in time. The mast is too tall to go under the bridge, puffed Rosie. Then I shall take another track, puffed Thomas. Thomas chuffed proudly on. Then there was trouble. He heard a loud crunch. Thomas looked up. Oh no, cried Thomas. The tall mast must have caught in the trees. Thomas couldn't move forwards or backwards. So he huffed and he chuffed. And with a mighty puff, Thomas broke free. Hooray, tooted Thomas. But Thomas didn't know the ropes holding the sails had untied. Thomas was feeling very grand now. The wind was strong. It was blowing him along. Whee! Thomas cried happily. He was going faster and faster. The wind grew stronger. Thomas raced around a bend. Be careful, Thomas, Molly tooted. The wind is filling the boat's sails. But Thomas wished by so quickly, he didn't hear her. The mayor, the fat controller and Lady Hack were waiting at the harbour. They could see Thomas racing towards them. Slow down, Thomas, boomed the fat controller. But Thomas couldn't slow down. Thomas whooshed past and raced away from them. Faster and faster, around a bend in the track. Suddenly the wind dropped and Thomas stopped. If the wind picks up again, I'll never be able to stop at the harbour, he cried. The boat will not be launched and the mayor and the fat controller will be very cross. Thomas knew then that he had been wrong not to wait for the engineer at the docks. I must chuff back to the docks as quickly as I can and I must bring the engineer to lower the masts, he tooted. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed and he steamed off. Thomas's wheels whirred to a stop at the docks. Has the engineer arrived, Salty? puffed Thomas. Oh, yes, me hearty, smiled Salty. Thomas was very relieved. The engineer climbed quickly into Thomas's cab and Thomas steamed off. Soon, Thomas arrived at the sailing boat. The engineer 
rolled the sails and lowered the masts. Slowly, Thomas chuffed back to the harbour. The boat was heavy. Thomas had to puff hard. This time, the wind couldn't help him. The mayor, the fat controller and Lady Hat were still waiting. They were happy to see Thomas and they were happy to see the mayor's sailing boat. Thomas, I see you have decided that full steam is better than full sail. Yes, sir, tooted Thomas. And as he watched the boat slide into the water, Thomas was very proud to be really useful. Gordon and the engineer. There are railway lines all over the island of Sodor. The railway runs from Brendam Docks right across the countryside. So there are lots of signals. They help the engines to stay safe as they go about their work. All the engines have favourite jobs. Gordon loves pulling the express. Gordon thinks it's the most important job on the island. And Gordon likes to feel important. One morning, the fat controller came to see Gordon. Gordon, the points are broken, said the fat controller. An important engineer is coming to fix them. You are to collect him at Marin Station. Then you must take him to the points as quickly as possible. Don't worry, sir, chuffed Gordon. I'll get him to the points for you. Gordon steamed to Marin. All the other engines were stuck. They couldn't go anywhere until the points were fixed. They all had to wait as Gordon puffed grandly along the express line. I'm an important engine collecting an important passenger, he puffed proudly. Gordon felt very grand. Gordon pulled in to Marin Station. There was a passenger carrying a toolbox waiting on the platform. He must be the important engineer, thought Gordon. All aboard, he whistled, and the man with the toolbox climbed on board. Wait! said the station master. Bertie the bus is bringing more passengers. I can't wait, Gordon huffed. I have a very important passenger on board. I have to leave now. And he left. Gordon puffed proudly along. But he didn't know that the man with the toolbox wasn't the engineer or that Bertie the bus had brought the engineer with all the other passengers. Oh no, groaned the engineer, I've missed my train. How will I ever fix the points now? Gordon rattled past Donald. Then he clattered past Douglas. Important engine coming through, chuffed Gordon. This made Douglas very cross. But the man with the toolbox was having a wonderful time. He was the only passenger and he didn't have to stop at any of the stations. At last, Gordon arrived at the broken points. I'm glad you're here, puffed Thomas. None of the engines can move until the points are fixed. But the man with the toolbox was very confused. I'm not an engineer said the man. I'm a carpenter. I thought Gordon was taking me to the docks. Oh, no! I've left the engineer behind, moaned Gordon. 
I'll have to go back and get him. But you can't reverse down the express line with the express, said the signalman. Maybe you could go on my line, puffed Thomas. That's a good idea, puffed Gordon. Thank you, Thomas. So Gordon backed down the line and left his express coaches. Then he steamed on to Thomas's track. He reversed quickly down Thomas's line. But he found Douglas blocking his way. Out of my way, huffed Gordon. I've got an important passenger to collect. You can't get past, puffed Douglas. I can only go back as far as the next station, then Donald is in the way. Gordon felt terrible. All the engines were stuck and it was all his fault. How can I collect the engineer, he puffed. Then Gordon had an idea. Maybe all the engines can help, he thought. Gordon told Douglas his idea. Then Douglas puffed down the track to tell Donald. What a grand plan, chuffed Donald. So Donald puffed back to collect the engineer. The engineer climbed on board. Then Donald chuffed back up the line. Donald dropped the engineer off at the station. Then Douglas took the engineer to the next stop where Gordon was waiting for him. Finally, Gordon took the engineer to the broken points. The points were soon fixed and the engines could puff through. Thank you, Gordon, puffed Thomas. That evening, the railway was back to normal. Thank you for helping me today, puffed Gordon. Even an important engine like me needs help sometimes.